Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel should be sent to the ICC. <laughs> Shocking. What's up, everybody? Hope you're doing good. Thank you very much for stopping by. You are very much appreciated. Let's listen and we're gonna make a comment after. Okay, let's go. Honorable Chairperson, I was taught when I was very young that insults are the last refuge of a scoundrel. And so calling me a terrorist, friend of Hamas, etc., is like water off a duck's back because it's an absolute untruth and is a mere insult of a scoundrel who has run out of ideas. Let us speak being honest and factual. The facts are the people of Palestine are denied the right to exist as human beings. They are denied the right to enjoy the freedoms and the rights we so love as South Africans. The collective punishment that Israel is exacting on all Palestinian people is an affront that has gone on for too long. The murder of children, of women, and the aged by Israel is an act that should have resulted in the International Criminal Court issuing an immediate arrest warrant for key decision makers, including Mr. Netanyahu, who is responsible for violations of international criminal law. Honorable members and honorable chairperson, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to present this statement. Today, I believe all of us join the world in expressing horror at the war crimes being committed in Palestine through the targeting of civilians, civilian infrastructure, UN premises, and other vulnerable targets. These actions remind us of our experiences as black South Africans living under apartheid. This is one of the key reasons South Africans, like people in cities all over the world, have taken to the streets to express their anger and concern at what is taking place in Gaza and the West Bank. These demonstrations illustrate the frustration felt the world over that people are being attacked and are losing their lives with little or no action to stop these atrocities. The facts that have been released detailing the devastation of the current conflict are horrendous. Over a thousand Palestinians are dead, thousands injured, public facilities destroyed, and cruel and wanton bombardment is ongoing. Therefore, as South Africa, we remain steadfast in calling for an immediate comprehensive ceasefire. The full as well as complete opening of all humanitarian corridors to ensure much needed aid and basic services reach those in need. Madam Chairperson, the actions that we are witnessing daily by Israel are a violation of international law, including the United Nations Charter, the Geneva Convention and all its protocols. In its attacks on and kidnapping of innocent civilians, Hamas has also violated international law. While we express horror at the violence, it is critical that we acknowledge that the illegal occupation of Palestine by Israel for several decades has led to bitter hatred and increased violence, and that this violence is not the first violence the people of Palestine have experienced. It has been going on for decades and decades and decades, and nothing we can say will obliterate that fact. However, Chairperson, the murder of children, of women, and the aged by Israel is an act that should have resulted in the International Criminal Court issuing an immediate arrest warrant for key decision makers, including Mr. Netanyahu, who is responsible for violations of international criminal law. We recall that in 1994, a genocide occurred on the African continent with much of the whole world watching as innocent people were massacred. During the Second World War, innocent people were massacred and placed under siege. In response, at the end of the war, an international system was created 
including the establishment of the United Nations. Human rights instruments and judicial mechanisms were also established so that history would not repeat such cruelty. However, the selective application of these international instruments and the utilization of some of the mechanisms for attaining narrow interests has resulted in calling to question the effectiveness of the system. It is a system that has failed the people of Gaza as it did in 1994 for the people of Rwanda and later of Bosnia. The collective punishment that Israel is exacting on all Palestinian people is an affront that has gone on for too long. The world has expressed horror at these affronts, but has not acted effectively to save Palestinian lives. Sadly, even here in our own country, there are many who choose to turn a blind eye to these atrocities. Honorable Chairperson, I was taught when I was very young that insults are the last refuge of a scoundrel. And so calling me a terrorist, friend of Hamas, etc., is like water off a duck's back because it's an absolute untruth and is a mere insult of a scoundrel who has run out of ideas. It has been clear in all our contributions that we support a two-state solution. This means we believe Israel has the right to exist as a state alongside a state of Palestine. This has been the long-standing view of the African National Congress before anyone expressed a view on Palestine, and so don't come here and attempt to claim any knowledge. The rights of Palestinian people are infringed on a daily basis. The Honorable Lekota was reported in a Jerusalem newspaper as saying there is no apartheid in Israel. People ride on buses together. He forgot to say that Palestinians are forced to live in small enclaves. They are not allowed to own their own property. Their land can be seized without any compensation and they have to carry identity documents, go through a range of points where their identity is constantly checked. In some, they exist in an apartheid state. So, chairperson, attempts to cast aspersions will not cause us to fail to speak for the oppressed wherever they may be. The atrocities we've reported upon in this debate are real and they're acknowledged by millions. The fake news of baby beheadings have been tried by the greatest in world power and have been proven to be false social media reports. And for such to be reported in this house as though it is factual, is absolutely disgusting lies. The bombing of hospitals, which was denied, has been proven to be real. Hello, Minister. Thank you. Please take your seat. There's a point of order. Request Thank that. you, Honorable Chairperson. Is the Honorable Minister prepared to take a question? You can take your seat, Honorable Minister. Uh, Honorable Mo Dr. Melda. I've asked, is the Honorable Minister prepared to take a question? Honourable Minister, are you prepared to take a question from the Honourable uh, Member? The Honourable Member can pose it. Hello? Did I, did, did I hear you correctly saying that the atrocities that we are speaking about, the beheading of children, that those are fake news, that it's not true? Is that the position of yes. the South African government? I want to ask you now. Yeah. No, it is evidence that has been provided by a range of non-governmental organizations, both in Israel and Palestine, because we don't only speak to Palestinians, we speak to peace-loving Israelis as well. And we know that there's a lot of fake news that attempts to cast Palestinians in a bad light. And it has been admitted, even from the White House spokesperson, that that statement that was made at the highest level 
was actually proven not to be factual. So, Honourable Member, I've responded to your question. And it's important, as I said at the start of my contribution, that when we speak on these matters, let us speak being honest and factual. The facts are the people of Palestine are denied the right to exist as human beings. They're denied the right to enjoy the freedoms and the rights we so love as South Africans, the rights and freedoms we fought so hard for, the rights and freedoms we united on as a diverse South African people. Today, some of us in this house belong, be, believe these rights belong to some and not to others. That is not the South African way. We believe all human beings enjoy the right to exist in freedom, enjoying justice and humanity. And that is the message that has to come out of this house. This house cannot stand up for abuse, cannot stand up for the infringement of other human beings, no matter who those human beings are. We've never sought retribution. I have the story of my grandfather died of a broken heart. He was a tailor and he had worked very hard, his fingers down to the skin, to make enough money to buy a house in Durban. And they got that house, my grandfather and my grandmother. Two years after they got it, the area was declared a white area. They lost that house without compensation. And he essentially died of a broken heart. I have no retribution because today I'm part of seeking to build a better South Africa. And our role must be to seek to build a better world. That that benefit we enjoy of human rights, of a fantastic constitution, of having institutions that are democratic and work for all of us, that privilege is not just for us. It must be for everyone. And in any debate we have, if we are true to ourselves, if we are true to our history, if we are true to what we've achieved, we will stand up and say what is being done to the people of Palestine is wrong, is intolerable, and we will not pretend to accept it. I thank you, Chairperson.